Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Super Kyle Ken Podcast. I am your host, as always, Josh12. And man, has it been a very long time since the last episode of this podcast, this official Dragon Ball podcast. Now, overall, the main reasoning behind why I haven't done an episode thus far is mostly due to the fact that it's my life has been very hectic as of late, and it's been very difficult just to do regular videos, let alone entire podcast episodes. You mean like, I mean like it's been a freaking long time, I know, but I mean like, come on, it, it like let's just put it this way: the last portion of 2015 has been very hectic. That's all I can really say. I mean, the holidays were crazy for me. And then we had the end of the year, New Year's, and then, like, my birthday just passed, and, like, the whole January thing. Like, there's just not enough time to do an episode of this podcast, but, which really sucks, because out of all the podcasts I do, other than the podcast I do with, um, with my good buddy, Evil Scar 23 uh, the Super Kyle Ken podcast is one of my faves, because it, it gives me a chance to talk all things Dragon Ball and anime and, you know, various stuff like that, but in the long run... There just hasn't been enough time to really discuss every single little thing I want to discuss. So, all I can really say is is that for anybody who likes viewing or watching or listening, uh, specifically listening to any of my overall, you know, rants or, you know, topics or discussions about any of the stuff I, I say on this podcast, all I can really say is that when there is a legitimate gap that usually means my life is very hectic at the time, and I can't really talk about anything, and, you know, episodes will just be, will just come out in very random moments, you know, it, it might be weeks later, it might be months later, so that's all I can really say. So from here on out, episodes for not only the Super Kyle Ken podcast, but my Josh 12 Effect podcast will be coming out sporadically, like, every several months so that's the best what best i can do and hopefully everybody can understand and enjoy but with that being said let's get into this episode first things first let's talk all things one punch man yes something that's not particularly dragon ball related but could possibly end up being somewhat connected i'm just saying like um if you don't know what I'm talking about, essentially, One Punch Man is an anime that just recently came out, and I personally loved it. I, I it, it ended its season last year, and it was such a perfect anime. In my personal opinion, I thought it was the best anime I saw all of last year. I mean, granted, I didn't really watch that much anime last year. I mean... I, I, to be honest, I really didn't watch that much at all. I mean, like, I watched a couple of anime movies, and I watched a couple of anime shows, and obviously the only ones I legitimately reviewed on a daily or a weekly basis was obviously Dragon Ball Super and uh, One Punch Man. But, man, was that show so freaking good. It's so entertaining, and I don't understand the hate that it's been getting. I feel like... A lot of people want to find some kind of flaw with the show, so they just randomly say bullshit. That doesn't make any sense. Like, there's some people out there, like the that like that one idiot who like bashed me in a video, uh, who called me um, who called me a, a Goku dick sucker, uh, which is fact, by the way. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, like, there's no, I'm just saying. There's nothing that could ever happen that would make me not watch, you know, Dragon Ball Z or love the Dragon Ball Z universe. I mean, not even if a Toriyama like you know, tomorrow says GT's canon or, you know, or like no matter how many shitty ass episodes they put on super, uh, I will never stop loving Dragon Ball. The Z universe is my shit. It's just, it's, it's bad. It's the best thing ever. It's better than anything else I enjoy in life. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of cool shit in the world. But, um, at the end of the day, one punch man was so good. And, and there's a lot of people who like to bash it, which I don't understand. I don't understand the One Punch Man hate. I feel like because it's so good and because it's become so popular and mainstream and how it's getting so many views and ratings and like how many people continue to praise its its uh, its records and you know its performance with uh, with audiences and stuff. People want to find some kind of flaw with the show and try and bash it, which I don't fully understand. I mean, like, it's a good, entertaining, fun show, and it's full of amazing action pieces. It's filled with a lot of great comedy. It's filled with a lot of amazing artists who put a lot of good, interesting work into their animation style, and it has a great direction, and the art is just phenomenal. I mean, like, that fucking art that they adapted from the manga, which I indeed have been picking up. Um, if you haven't noticed, I, I posted a picture of um, 
my One Punch Man uh, manga collection as of now or as of then at the time uh, on my Instagram. So if you want to check that out, of course, go to my Instagram at Josh to wealth just saying just go over there but uh but with that being said one punch man is so good and it's so phenomenal but i just don't understand the hate and there's a lot of idiots out there who are saying things that like like he's a rip-off character and he can never beat goku and like he's a rip-off of superman or some said shit like a lot of people say a lot of ignorant dumb stuff but can't you just find the fun and entertainment out of what he's doing in the in in just on the wreck i mean come on i mean one punch man is a great show in my personal opinion, it was the best animated program I saw all of last year. And I and once again, like I stated, I didn't see a lot of animated shows or anime shows in general last year. But One Punch Man was the best. It was so freaking good. I mean, in my personal subjective opinion, and this might rub people the wrong way, but I feel like One Punch Man is the Dragon Ball Z of today's generation this is today's generation's dragon ball z in the sense that it has the great comedy it has the great action it has the great fights it has all the cool boss battles it has all the cool boss villains and it has a really cool entertaining cast list you know i mean like there's so many cool characters and it's just phenomenal. I mean, like, I, I think I stated that actually in my reviews where it's like, it's basically the Dragon Ball Z of today. And that's no way as a, as a bash towards um, Dragon Ball Z. It's more of like, a, like an honor because it's like Dragon Ball Z, in my personal opinion, and, you know, it's, it's one of the best action animes of all time or, or in a lot of cases, the best definitive, uh, you know, action anime of all time or battle anime or shonen anime, whichever you want to go with it. And One Punch Man really comes close to like, you know, peaking there. And it's really freaking awesome to see it go. And I can't wait for season two. But um, how that pertains to Dragon Ball Z, or at least my discussion for today, my main discussion is that, is there a possibility? And I'm talking to all the Dragon Ball fans, all the Dragon Ball Z fans, and all of the one hardcore One Punch Man fans. Is there a possibility that we can get a canon, yes, a canon crossover with Saitama and Goku and the rest of the Z-Warriors and the rest of the One Punch Man universe? Can we get that done? Is that a possibility? Is that even realistically possible to happen i mean granted we've seen some cool anime crossovers before i mean like hell just look at what dragon Ball z has been able to do with crossovers i mean like it's done like i've seen goku and a lot of promotional stuff in japan commercial wise uh mainstream wise and we've seen a lot of cool anime inside commercial um crossovers rather with uh dry mozzie and one pun um not one punch uh one piece uh most famously and of course they uh recently like i want to say like what a couple years back just did that that really big uh crossover with toriko uh one piece and dry mozzie so there's a lot of interesting you know shows and and specials that there are crossovers for but if there's a crossover i'm pretty sure everyone wants to see that everybody wants to fucking see this shit. It's One Punch Man and Dragon Ball Z. I want to see it. And a fan, I forget his name, but the a specific illustrator uh, made a fan-made manga of a crossover of Dragon Ball Z and One Punch Man. And it is so freaking good. I mean, like, this is how you fucking do crossovers. This is how it should happen in the anime. I mean, granted, uh, um, anime season two is obviously going to tackle more stuff in the manga that it still has not uh, been able to do in season one, of course. Uh, that's what they're going to end up trying to do, I'm pretty sure. But at the end of the day, wouldn't it be so awesome if us hardcore fans of both properties got to see a crossover of the two and get to see, like, maybe, like, a big, awesome character like Goku or Vegeta take on Saitama? I mean, I've seen so much fan art, let alone the fan-made manga that I'm about to talk about in a minute, but I've seen so much fan art from people who've created concepts and, and amazing like very realistic photographic images of Saitama fighting Vegeta or fighting Goku or fighting the both of them and it's so awesome it's so, it's something I would love to fucking see I would love to, I would be so stoked if they announced that they were doing a legitimate crossover with Dragon Ball Z and One Punch Man is it possible not really because it would obviously have to be a non-canon situation of course it can't really pertain to super 
um, which of course is heading towards its own uh, direction, which I'll get into later in this podcast, but man, would it be so freaking awesome if they did some form of crossover. I mean, like, let's get into the fan-made manga. The fan-made manga was made by... Um, I can't remember the illustrator's name, uh, but in the comment section below, for anybody who does remember, uh, please comment below and leave me a link or, you know, the title of the name or what have you, but there was a specific manga that a fan made, uh, that he created a storyline wherein, uh, spoilers, if you haven't seen it, please keep in mind, there's spoilers, but, um, essentially Saitama ends up in the Dragon Ball, I guess he's been running somewhere, or doing some training, or some said shit, and he, like, accidentally, uh, journeys too far away from home, and he ends up in the Dragon Ball Z universe, you know, he, f he ends up near, you know, Vegeta, and he, and, like, Vegeta's in the middle of his training, and he's like, you know, get the fuck away from me, you bald bastard, or, or whatever the hell, is, you know, seriously, mean thing Vegeta can say at the time, and, uh, and Saitama's just trolling, and Vegeta's just like, man, I'm the prince of all saints, fuck you, bald bitch, and then they start battling, and it's so freaking good, it's so freaking good, I want that to be a thing, can someone animate that shit, please, someone, some fan, some amazing fan, and there's a lot of you, make a freaking crossover, I want to see a Vegeta versus Saitama thing, or, like, even Goku versus Saitama, that would be, oh my god, oh my god, that would be so good, but anyways, like, the, the fight continues, and Vegeta's like, you know what, I sense something very dark, you have some kind of, you have this energy that, you know, is untapped, and it just, it, it just keeps going, like, it's, it's, it doesn't have an end to it, and they battle, and there's a point, there's a point, where Saitama almost ends up punching freaking Vegeta, and Vegeta's like, holy shit, this guy, you can't mess around with him, like, because if that connected with me, I would be fucked, and I love that shit, that was some boss shit, that was awesome, and that was made by a fucking fan, who really did a good job at doing respects for both the Prince of All Saints Vegeta, but of course, the One Punch Man Freaking Saitama, C-Class hero. Remember, it's a, he's a C-Class. <laughs> you gotta remember that because no one wants to give him credit because he's so awesome. And no one wants to believe it. But man, what it, I'm just saying, that was my highlight of that fan-made manga where freaking Saitama almost punches the shit out of Vegeta. He, of course, he blocks it because, you know, he's Vegeta. You know, we have to be fair because we already know all the hardcore Dragon Ball Z fans, including myself, would be super pissed off if, like, that ditch, that connected and, like, the artist, you know, you know, drew, like, an exploded Vegeta face or something. I would be pissed and I would be commenting, like, another fanboy asshole. But, man, it was so awesome. It's just, he blocks and he's like, holy shit, that was serious. And then they continue and they start fighting some more and Saitama's taken some major, f I mean, like, I think there's a point where... Um, I could be wrong, I, I forget which attack it was, it was either the Gallic Gun or the Final Flash, I forget, I'm pretty sure it was Gallic Gun, and Vegeta just shoots it at him, and he just takes it, and he blocks it, and he, he punches it, man, it was so good, like, if you can animate that and make it somehow like a canon thing, where it's like on Season 2 of One Punch Man, oh my god, my life would be complete. I mean, like, not completely, because I want to see some more stuff. Like, I want to see Goku fight Satama. I want to see, you know, Geno's fight Gohan, maybe. Because that would kind of be interesting. And plus, Gohan needs some redemption, because he's a fucking pussy. Now, for some reason, he's such a such a prick. I mean, like, there's a reason why Goku, in the in the latest chapter of the manga, Super, was like, that little shit. He, he, he didn't say it, but you knew he was about to say it. He was just like, that little motherfucker... I fucking, I saved his ass so much, I taught him everything I know, and he was supposed to be the savior of the earth after I died, and look at this fuckhead, he's fucking, he's studying, he's studying, he's, we're gonna, we're going to another fucking universe, we're not in univ, we're in going to another universe for entire, for, uh, for however fucking long. I don't know how long it's going to be. We might as well be there all fucking year. Who the fuck knows? But we're going to another universe where we're going to fight an intergalactic battle for the stake of the Earth. If we lose, Champa gets the Earth. He gets to keep it and he gets to eat all our food. And God knows what the fuck else he wants to do. I mean, he's the god of destruction. He can. We don't know the lengths of his power. He might be stronger than Beerus. He might be weaker than Beerus. Who the fuck knows? But all we know is that if we lose this battle, 
we fucking lose the earth and go on is like I'm gonna go study because I like books. Fuck you. Fuck you. Whoever wrote that should be shot in the head. I'm sorry, T Toriyama, because I know it was you or some little little weasel who fucking studies you or something. I don't know. But I'm just saying, I, I didn't want to rant. But man, does it piss me off that Gohan's not involved and he's become such a little fucking douchebag in Super. I don't know how that How did it happen? How is the, How did that happen? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but how did it happen where Gohan became a sucky character? I'm going to have to redo my video with, like, Gohan sucks. I, I said no. Now I'm going to have to say yes, because that is some bullshit right there. I'm just saying, that is some serious bullshit. I mean, like, we're fighting another... We're fighting an intergalactic war against super-powered beings. We don't even know how powerful they are. We haven't seen them fight yet. And one of them looks like Frieza, and another one's a Saiyan. He might as well be a god for all we know. And he's, he, we're gonna fucking lose. We don't know, we have Piccolo. Who the hell knows how fucking strong Piccolo is? I don't know. And Gohan's like, I'm gonna study because I'm a professor, you know. Fucking asshole. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go on, I, uh, Gohan fans, I know you probably killed yourselves by now. Hopefully not because, you know, that's not the way to go. But, and I'm sorry to say that comedically, but you know what I mean. It's just... It just really sucks how sad the character of Gohan's been. It's like, how did that happen, though? Like, in Battle of Gods, I can deal with his performance there. Like, he was pretty okay. I mean, granted, not everyone did good. I mean, Piccolo got taken out, TN, you know, Android 18, Gotenks, for fuck's sake, you know, and Gotenks is pretty OP to a certain extent. And uh, everyone lost, even Vegeta. I mean, like, Vegeta put a good fight, but he lost too. And, you know, so I could respect Gohan for trying... But, and, and of course, in, even in the movie Resurrection F, like, he did a pretty decent job. I mean, granted, he couldn't go Ultimate Gohan anymore, or Mystic Gohan, whichever name you want to call it. But man, in Super, it is just a sad, depressing de it decline. It's like watching Creed and, like, seeing Rocky's decline, you know, from, like, the, the tri and trials and tribulations he goes as for being a champion, and, be and, like, now he's, like, the old guy in the movie. That's Gohan, and he's not even that old, he's still young, but now he's like super skinny, and he fucking, he has terrible clothing styles, and he's a fucking nerd, and he's a professor, and he's not fighting anymore, and it just depresses me, but overall, going to my original topic, which is the, the overall main story that I want to talk about today, uh, definitely check out that fan-made manga, I forget the name of it, it's basically the, the, the manga where Saitama fights Vegeta, if you know what I'm talking about, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you do, check it out, it's freaking phenomenal, I forget the artist and illustrator slash writer's name, but, um, please, if you remember, uh, comment below the name, uh, if you're viewing this, but man, was it awesome, that fight was so good, the story, I don't even know if he did more chapters, I don't know if he made more, like, I think it, like, I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a Saitama versus Goku fight, which I don't even want to get to, I, maybe I'll do that for a future pod, but for me, personally, I really don't care who fucking wins in a fight between Saitama and, and Goku, because it would piss off everybody anyways, it would piss off a shit ton of people, and we haven't seen Saitama really fight in space yet. Like, we see him survive in space because he's so fucking boss. He just knows. He's like, I can't breathe in space, but I can hold my breath for, like, a very long time. <laughs> which is awesome. Which is so fucking cool and dope. Uh, but, um, you know, Goku versus Saitama. I, 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 I still go with Goku just because I'm that much of a nerd and an asshole. But, um, man... It would be so cool if we saw that. I want someone to fan make that shit, please. Or at least a Saitama vs. Vegeta based off that dude's comic uh, slash uh, fan made manga. Would be so phenomenal. But that being said and done, let's move off of that story and get into Super. Now, first things first, the anime uh, is coming to a close with its Resurrection F saga. I personally haven't been a big a uh, fan of the saga, if you've been watching my reviews, or as I like to call them, rants, because that's what they are at the end of the day, um, the, the super, the, the Resurrection F saga hasn't really been that great, it's been kind of terrible, if I have to be completely honest, which really sucks, because, you know, you know, I, I, I love the, the, the Z universe, and I love the Z characters and shit, but, man, the, that saga has been terrible thus far, it's just, it's like, there's been, like, a couple of okay episodes, but overall, the saga's just not been great, and it's really sad and depressing, but it is gonna be over this week, I think, um, 
is supposed to be the last episode of the saga, which is, of course, where Vegeta becomes a Super Saiyan God, Blue, and then fights Frieza and wins, but then Frieza's like, oh, I'm gonna destroy the planet and, you know, blah, 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 you know, time jump slash Goku wins, you know, again, so... I can already see that happening. Uh, but with that being said, with the Resurrection F Saga ending, that only means that we're entering the Universe 6 Saga, which is going to be boss. I really hope Toy Animation does not fuck us up, uh, fuck us over, rather, with them adapting the Universe 6 Saga because it's been so freaking stupid good. It's been so stupid good, it's, it's impossible that it's not completely made by Toriyama himself. It's so freaking good. I mean, Toritaro, uh, the artist or illustrator, if you will, who's been developing the the companion manga, is so great. He's fun. He's been killing it. And that last couple chapters we've been getting have been phenomenal. Like every single time a new chapter comes out, I want the next one immediately after I read. I mean, like granted, there's a couple of stinkers. Like I want to say, like the only times you get like a stinker in the manga is like, I want to say back in the Battle of Gods arc, but ever since it's been hitting its original content, it's been consistently on par, so that's all I can really say about that, but at the end of the day, the anime is coming to its end for the Resurrection F Saga, which I'm completely glad over because the saga has been terrible, I'm just saying uh, the, the first Frieza Saga is better. And that's not me trying to be like, oh, I'm a hardcore 90s Funimation fan more than the freaking Dekai fans or the fucking d d d d d d super fan. Like, that's that's not the point. The point is, is that they just, it's not consistent and it's not great. And it's just story-wise, writing-wise, direction-wise, and especially animation and artwork-wise, it just isn't good. It just has the, the same kind of depth and weight that Z had, and that, and that really sucks. Uh, but overall... It's coming to its end, and I can't wait for the new saga. So, uh, real quick, let me take a quick break, a little quick water break, if you will. So, uh, all right, that's great. Uh, anyways, manga wise, has been killing it, as I mentioned prior. But the big thing that I want to talk about is the new characters that are have been. Uh, officially announced and developed in the saga, which of course are the Universe 6 uh, competitors. Now, as we all know, when it comes to the Universe 6 arc uh, slash tournament, the, the um, Beerus' team consists of uh, Beerus and Whis, obviously, as coaches, if you will. We have Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Majin Buu. But let's get into uh, the newest character that's been uh, attached to that specific roster of Beerus' team, which of course has to consist of Beerus and Whis as coaches, of course, and then you have Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Majin Buu, and the newest uh, character to enter the Z-Universe, which has to be Monaka. Now, Monaka, I know a lot of people have been bashing his character design and the fact that he just looks stupid and he has the, these gigantic nipples, which are hilarious. I love Monaka's design. I think he's just a cool... I just And you know what I love? about Goku in this saga, how earnest he is about meeting everybody. Like, we're meeting these entirely galactically, universally, just parallel different characters, and he's just like, hey, I'm Goku, what's up? I, I just love, that's why I love the manga slash anime version of Goku, I, I love it. it. I know a lot of people when it comes to like live action fan films and stuff, everybody, you know, everyone has to be serious and shit, but... I just love Goku, he's so fun and entertaining, and I just love how he's like, you know, I'm Goku, pleased to meet you. It's like, who who, who announces themselves that way for a character who looks like a Munaka, and who's allegedly the strongest character Beerus, the destroyer, the god of destruction, has ever faced? I mean, besides Goku, Munaka is the strongest, so, we don't know, I mean, I mean, like, if we want to bet, you want to play some bets? Who is the strongest opponent on Beerus' team? Is it Goku? Is it Vegeta? Or is it Munaka? That's what I want to know. Let's see what this guy can do. But overall, uh, moving off of uh, Goku's team, we go to Champa or Beerus' team rather. We go to Champa's team, and we got the design of those specific characters and the title slash names for each character. Now we got Heat, who is this... Um, who I feel like is like the leader of the group, I guess, and he looks like the more badass 
uh, of the of the bunch. He, I I don't know. Like he, and for me personally, I think he looks definitely badass. I mean, like he looks like he's going to start some serious shit. I feel like he'll probably end up being the main opponent for Goku. Um, granted, we don't know who is the strongest opponent on this team. It might as well be the Frieza-looking guy, or maybe the little tiny Saiyan kid, or something. Or maybe the giant robot, uh, or the giant bear, Winnie the Pooh-looking motherfucker. Who the hell knows? But it might be Heat. Heat might end up being the strongest of, uh, Champa's team. And then we have the, the Saiyan boy, or girl, I don't know. A lot of people have been speckling, like, oh, is it a boy or a little girl? Like, who the hell knows? Who cares? The point is, it's another Saiyan. So, there you go, and of course it's, um, I don't know how to pronounce it that well, I think it's Kaibi, Ka Kaiba, not Kaiba, that's freaking another character, but, um, Kabe, I don't know, Kaibi, I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but that's the Saiyan character, the Saiyan on, uh, the Universe 6 team, and I think it's alright, I feel like he's not, uh, granted this is Saiyans from that universe, but, is there some significance to his character, and is he the strongest? I mean, like, Saiyans are the strongest of any universe, let's just put it out there, but, like, is he the strongest on that team? You know, you never know. And plus, does he have any kind of royalty? Like, is he a significant character, um, or is that Saiyan, like, a significant character in his universe? Like, is he the prince or king or, you know, princess or queen, whatever? I don't know. I know, once again, a lot of people have been speculating, like, oh, is it a boy or girl? I'm guessing it's a little boy. But, um, that would be, that'd be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool if, like, he's, like, the twin of Vegeta or something. Like, he's the, like, the prince of all Saiyans in that universe. That would be kind of interesting. But moving off that, we also have the Frieza look like Frost, which, um, I know a lot of people have been having some, some certain qualms with. A lot of people are like, you know, oh, another Frieza again? We just had Frieza, like, a dozen times. We got the movie, the show, now another Frieza. For me, personally, I have no real problem with it. I mean, we knew this was going to happen. I mean, as, be um... Not Beerus, but Whis, as he explained it in a previous chapter of the manga, essentially, uh, every universe has a twin. So, like, every cert cert set of characters has a twin to them. So, like, why Whis and Vados look alike because they're twins to one another. And, of course, you know, Beerus and Champa, they're twin brothers to each other. So, that's why they look so alike. So, I'm guessing Frost is, like, the twin brother or sister or transgendered character uh to frieza or cooler or whatever non-canon version of a frieza lookalike that they want to come up with uh you know wink wink toy animation uh but you know overall it, it, it's whatever I, I don't i don't expect that much from frost i expect him just to be a familiar face for goku and vegeta to be like what frieza's back you know but um, overall, it's it's whatever. I'm mostly just interested in the character of Heat and uh, the little Saiyan character. But moving off of that, we have Botama or Botamo, uh, which is the the Winnie Winnie the Pooh bear, uh, Pooh bear freaking lookalike who um I'm guessing will be a a Foley character for Majin Buu to fight or maybe Piccolo. Um, and then we of course have the giant robot character, which is um. Uh, called Megida, Megida, I think that's how you pronounce the name, there's a lot of names here I can't pronounce, other than Heat and Frost, I'm sorry, I'm illiterate, so take it easy with me, but, um, yeah, pretty much, that is the Chompa's team, and design-wise, I like it, I mean, like, it, it definitely fits a lot to Toriyama's style, like, you have the very cool-looking, serious, you know, fighter lookers, like, you know, Heat and, and Frost, and you have, like, the the tip stereotypical like tiny goofy characters like the little Saiyan character like Kaibi or KB whatever the fuck his name is and then you have like the overly exaggerated like goofy fun you know characters who who will probably have like very interesting magical powers and abilities like or Botamo and uh fucking Megia so I I like the team overall I know a lot of people are like we want more Saiyans on that team or something but I'm okay with it I think the designs look great I think the characters look very cool, and I can't wait to see what they can do. And now, let's get to some speculations. Which character is going to be fighting which character? As of right now, um, the newest chapter for the manga hasn't come out, so we don't know who's fighting who. But uh, I'm speculating that Goku is probably going to end up fighting Heat. That just seems like a, like a no-brainer. Like, Heat looks like he's going to be the main leader of this team. We don't know. Once again, you know, any one of these characters could be the strongest, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm guessing Vegeta will fight Frost, um, or Kaibi, whoever, 
Um, if not, I say Kaibi goes to 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 Monaka, um, and I'm guessing probably it's a toss up between uh, uh, Botamo fighting Piccolo and Megida fighting uh, Majin Buu. It's pretty much a toss up between the two. But overall, that's pretty much my speculation there. Um, I like it. I like the characters. I think they're you know they there's a lot of very interesting things. I mean. Who the hell knows? I mean, like, these characters could be possibly a million times stronger than our heroes. So, you know, we, we just don't know. I, I really don't know where to go with it. I mean, like, I really want to see what Heat can do. And I really want to see what this little Saiyan person, this Saiyan character can do. And I'm also kind of, I'm also kind of freaked out that the Saiyan character doesn't have a tail, like... If that's supposed to be a Saiyan, why doesn't he have a tail? Like, d like, is it that like in Universe Six, Saiyans don't have tails, or, or, or is he hiding it? You know, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like when you look at his design, you can't really see a tail on him. So I don't know what th what's that all about. But Heat looks like a boss. He looks so freaking cool. He Oh man, I just want to see him fight Goku. That's like my main dream right now for these characters and Frost. I say let Vegeta kill him. I say Vegeta needs some fucking redemption, and he needs to fight a Frieza lookalike. And I know Super, I know they're going to pull off the movie version, and they're just going to let Goku, you know, time travel, woo, time reversal, and then, like, Goku defeats Frieza with a Kamehameha wave. I could see that happening a mile away. And if it doesn't, I'll be, like, super shocked and, like, oh, my God, Super just did something really cool, um, the anime version, rather, but when it comes to the manga, I say let Vegeta fight Frost, I think that would be a really cool team-up, uh, face-off, rather, and if Frost is as powerful as Frieza, or maybe even stronger, um, it would be really cool to see how Vegeta reacts, and you know what, you know what would really be interesting, if these characters are not even villains, you know, like, this is a tournament, it's not like a fight, to the death. I mean, like, granted, it could be. We don't know. The showdown hasn't happened yet. We just only we've only seen the stairs and the and the stair offs rather. We haven't seen some actual fighting, but um, yeah, it'll be really funny if like all these characters are like, you know, like you're Frieza. It's like no I'm Frost. It's like are you a villain? It's like no, I just hang out, you know, <laughs> or something. I don't know. We don't know. All these characters might as well be villains. They have a lot of menacing looks. I mean, look at that bear creature. He looks like an asshole. Um, Heat looks like he's diabolical. He looks like he's gonna be like a cell kind of a character. He's just gonna be, he's gonna, he's just a demon, you know, hiding in the flesh, you know. And then of course you have the stupid robot, you know, whatever. And then you have Frost, who's, you know, once again another Frieza look alike. So who the hell knows where that's gonna go? And then you have the Saiyan character, and you know, Saiyans at their core are usually evil characters. So it's gonna be very interesting. But Monaka is going to be, be he's going to beat everybody. Let's, <laughs> it would be kind of funny if Monaka's like, I'm going to beat everybody right now because I am the strongest character alive. And that's also kind of weird. How is it possible that a character, <laughs> that a character like Monaka has been living in this universe for so long and no one's ever met him before? Isn't that kind of weird? Like, I mean, granted, I know this is original content created now. You can't really consider it, you know. You know, it's it's an afterthought, whatever, but, like, we fought so many fucking characters on Earth and in the universe, and now there's one character who's, like, the strongest warrior Beerus has ever, Beerus-sama has ever faced off against is this tiny little dude with gigantic nipples that make sounds, which is hilarious, and when he gets riled up, I mean, just saying, like, Whis is, like, oh, he's the strongest, like, he doesn't look that much, it's, like, it's like, don't get, don't be getting crazy. Monaka may look stupid, and he may have, like, gigantic nipples, but when you mess with him, he's going to be very difficult to stop. He's, you know, he can even, he, he's so powerful, according to Whis, you know. He can really make, he can have Beerus, you know, a run for his money. So, there's some serious, <laughs> there's some serious shit going down with these characters, and I love it. I freaking am in love with it. Monaka looks awesome. Everybody else looks awesome. Gohan's not there. Why? Fuck. I don't know. He's an asshole now. I don't know. But everybody... And Piccolo... That's another really interesting thing about this whole thing. 
uh, about this whole arc, rather, which is how is Piccolo going to fare off? Because we don't know how... I know... I'm pretty sure all the hardcore Piccolo fans out there, and I know there's a significant number, are all happy. It's like, yeah, Piccolo's on the team, yeah! But how strong is Piccolo? Like, I've heard a lot of rumors that apparently in the next chapter we're going to see how powerful Piccolo is, like how much, you know, he's really, you know, gained and how grown and whatever the fuck, but... How powerful can he really end up being? We haven't seen him really fight, um, I excluding GT, since like the Cell games uh, in a legitimate fight. And in the Boo sagas, you know, he didn't really do that much except for like Teach and like yell at Gotenks. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. And Super, once again, we haven't really seen that much. I mean, like he did some talking like during the Battle of God's Ark and... You know, he fought a little bit against, you know, the Resurrection F saga and obviously died for some stupid reason. But how is he going to fare off in this saga? I just don't know. I mean, like, how much power can he have gained? And if he is significantly powerful or has some kind of significant, you know, boost in energy, who can he really take on legit logistically? Like, realistically, who can he really take on? I mean... Once again, I put my money that Goku's going to fight Heat, Vegeta's going to fight Frost, um, Monaka's going to fight the little Saiyan character, and uh, it's a toss-up between the robot and the bear, uh, between Piccolo and Majin Buu. But man, but Piccolo, he is he going to be able to face off any of these characters. Once again, we don't know how powerful these characters are. We, I mean, like, for all we know, the, the bear character could be the strongest one, or the little Saiyan character uh, could be the strongest, or Frost could be the strongest. Who knows? Uh, f for me, I, I say Heat is the strongest. That's just my, just my guess, but we just don't know. But man, would it be really interesting to see, like, who he can really face off against. I mean, for me... I really want to see Piccolo do some very interesting stuff, but I just don't know who he can really fight up against. And and I really I really want to see him win, but can he really win? I really don't know. I, we're going to have to wait and see. But uh, overall, let me know what your personal speculations down below when it comes to Universe 6 arc. I mean, the next chapter will be coming in pr very soon. And of course, uh, this weekend will be the end of this, the Resurrection F saga and uh, we'll be entering the Universe 6 Saga, which I can't wait. I mean, I don't know how much filler episodes they're going to put in between, because, of course, the the Universe 6 Saga is not officially done in uh, the, the Companion series, so, you know, for all we know, the, the anime could very well you know, skip some stuff or actually be ahead of the manga, so, which is some scary stuff, because whenever animes and mangas, like, come close to one another in um, serialization and one surpasses the other, that means the show has to create filler episodes. You know, it happens all the time. I mean, like, it even happened in Z, where you, like, you see episodes that are not canon to the manga. Well, that's because there was enough time, and, you know, chapters hadn't come out yet that Toriyama had done, so they had to make some filler episodes. That's why there's a whole bunch of, you know, nonsense happening, and so many people, characters are training um, very, very stre long stretches of time, or, like, why characters are, like, yelling for long stretches of time. So that's pretty much why, because it's filler, and, you know, specifically chapters, you know, were not coming out at on time but now that the 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 anime is coming very close to where the manga is it really makes me think is like it, which one's going to surpass the other and plus what kind of arc will we be getting after this sixth one like this universe six tournament what kind of arc could we expect after this one i mean like my guess is i i really don't know i i like to see another fight or a rematch between goku and beerus i like to see a part two to that uh, maybe I'd like to see Vegeta become a bad guy again. I don't know why. I just, <laughs> I just really do. Or, or maybe like other adventures and other universes. Like maybe like once they're done with Universe Six, you know, uh, Goku and the rest of the gang is like, you know what? Let's go to Universe Twelve. Let's see what that's all about. You know, and just go over there and see what kind of interesting characters and fighters are over there. Uh, who the hell knows? Or maybe Saitama shows up. I'd like to fucking see that shit go down. But um, that's probably not gonna happen anytime soon or ever. Although it would be pretty badass. God, I'm still saying that Vegeta Saitama fight. Oh god, I wanna see it. I wanna see it animated. But um at the end of the day, let me know what you personally think about all this stuff. Uh with that being said and done, let's move off of 
all the topics. Uh, I don't want to be discussing everything for so long. I don't have that much time left. So I'm going to skip uh, some certain things and uh, get right into uh, some specific comments. Yes, the comment section of the podcast. So let's get right into that and we'll be officially done with this new edition of the podcast, which um, I'm really glad that I finally got done because I was really, I was really, you know, thinking there for a second where it's like, is this show done? Because, you know, I don't have the time and I don't know whenever a new episode's going to come out, but hey, here I am doing another one. But um, quick water break once again. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into some comment sections. Um, coming up with my latest Dragon Ball Super episode review. Well, the sorbet shooting Goku scene significantly made more sense than the movie's version. We actually had Goku depowering from his god form to his base form. When Goku was at base, he was relaxed with little to no ki at all, thus being vulnerable to the sorbet's death ring. Well, basically what this uh, YouTuber's uh, pretty much getting at is that uh, essentially the death ring stupidity, which I think is really at, it, at its core a dumbass plot device, um, to make, you know, viewers to be like, oh, is Frieza gonna win? It's like, no, it's not, because Vegeta's there, let's be real. But, um, what he's getting at is that it makes more sense on the show. I guess you can make the argument, like, the debate, like, if you wanted to debate, like, I guess you can make the argument that it does make a little bit more sense on the show that Goku depowers his from his uh, Super Saiyan Blue form to his normal base form, but still at, at its core, like, it still doesn't make sense because Goku, even in his base form, is so much more powerful than, you know, any other character that why does this common death ring, yes, it's a common death ring, have so much, uh, you know, effect on his, pa on his body, like, how? It just doesn't make that much sense to me. I mean, granted, you know, like, I, I understand the logistics of it. Like, it's meant to be a teaching method for Goku to be like, you know, like, you know, like how they did in the movie. Where, like, Whis is like, you know, your problem is this and your problem is this. It's like, Vegeta, you need to, you know, you need to calm down. You need to relax. You need to see the brighter things in life. And Goku, you need to be more serious. You need to, you need to take things more seriously. You need to defeat your you know, your opponents very quickly instead of letting them get uh, the upper hand on you and stuff like that. So I understand and letting your guard down and stuff like I understand that I fully understand that, but it still doesn't make sense that a common death ring, a common beam ring or whatever the fuck they want to call it has that much effect on his body. It just does not make that much sense to me. So at its core, I still feel it's stupid and you may think it, it makes more sense on the TV show. I still feel it's dumb either way. That's just my opinion. Uh, moving off of that, uh, my Beerus destroys dinosaurs video. Of course he did. He said himself uh, to Weiss that he got like this. Uh, Weiss, Lord Beerus, the super saiyan that killed Frieza lives on planet named Earth. Beerus, Earth, you said. That's the planet where I extinct those dinosaurs. Well, yes, that makes sense. Anyways, uh, moving off of that, another comment on my latest Super episode review. I have noticed some of the bad visuals of the episode, but I tried to ignore that. I like the part where Goku punched Frieza in the face when Frieza was losing stamina. I like when Boma puts Jocko in a sleeper hold, which Boma and Jocko make a good team at, making us laugh. I look forward to Universe 6 Saga, uh, but I am so tired of waiting for the English dub uh, to be announced in the States. Well, uh, I cannot uh, agree more. I obviously am also very tired that the English dub has not happened. Uh, I don't even know when this, you know, Toonami Asia dub is supposed to happen. I don't know if that's still happening. All I know is that Funimation needs to do an English dub immediately because I fucking... I'm actually kind of sick and tired of seeing the Japanese dub. I, I know that sounds wrong because it's like, you know, like, that's where it comes from. That's the home. That's the original, bitch. I understand that, but I just... I get more joy out of watching these characters in my home language, you know, I in my common tongue. I just, I get more justification, if you will, with watching these characters in English form. That's what I get, like, when I hear the voice of Goku, I hear Sean Schemmel. Like, that's, that's just me. Like, when I hear, like, Sean Schemmel is the definitive Goku to me, and I, and I love Mazaka Nozawa. She's fucking phenomenal. She's a great voice actor, but... You know, and she will always be the original Goku. No one can take that away from her, but 
for me, I just, I like the English dub more. That's just me. Uh, but overall, let's move off of that. Uh, and also, I agree with all the rest of the stuff you said. I mean, like, the, the bad visuals, I can't ignore. Uh, but I know it is what it is. And, of course, the Boma Jocko stuff is freaking hilarious. Uh, but moving off of that, let's get into some other stuff. Uh, on my Silver the Hedgehog versus Mewtwo fight, uh, it's Silver the Hedgehog. Well... There you go. I, I completely agree with you. Silver the Hedgehog, well, considering I did say Silver the Hedgehog would win, I guess, you know, there you go. But anyways, moving off that, on my um, Goku vs. Superman rant video, which is a video I've been getting a lot of comments on, sadly. <clears throat> One thing that I would like to comment on about Screw Attack, they say Superman is limitless and that Goku will always have a limit. He isn't limitless, according to his official guide. They say there can only be one winner because Superman is limitless. If Goku has a limit, how the hell does he keep getting stronger and stronger? If Goku was limited, he would have remained at the same power level all the time, stuck to the same limit. Goku is the one who is limitless because he always finds a way to break his limits and attain a new strength and power. We do not know how strong he could become. That, to me, is limitless potential. All the feats Screw Attack used about Superman, for example, tanking 20 supernovas, um... Lifting the book of infi infinite uh, pages and lifting an eternity half all have been debunked. How does Superman defeat someone with the power to break his own limits and to overtake somebody else's? Uh, someone has to come up with some bullshit uh, stating he, he is limitless. Goku has attained a level of strength with universe busting potential. Uh, which is true. Uh, anyways, uh, as much as I adore Superman, Dragon Ball Super suggests Goku has enough power to keep Superman down for the count. Screw Attack says, um, Screw Attack say, rather, uh, Superman is an ideal that he inspires, but that doesn't mean he cannot lose a fight. Goku vs. Superman 2 was an insult to Goku himself. Superman's heat vision would go through Goku's skin. He's tanked more than that. He's been hit with some serious blasts in the DBZ universe. That is all. And I fully agree with you, sir. Yes, I agree with everything you stated. Hell, it's basically my main argument. But, um, yeah, people will continue to have this... It, it Like, it's the classic, you know, motto. It's like, ignorance is bliss. You know, people will believe what they want. People will always root for the mainstream. People will always love Superman more because he is Superman. And I'm not saying that's wrong. Like, Superman is cool. He's a great character in his own right. He has interesting, fun stories. He, you know, I love the movies and stuff, and I love the cartoon shows. And there's a lot of good in Superman. But is he my definitive favorite character? No. Um, but even even with popularity and fanboyisms thrown aside, just look at the logistics of the of that fight in general. It doesn't make sense, and and the way you pronounce it does make sense in the in the sense of, you know, how they're wrong. You know, because Goku having limits is semi true. It's like quasi true. It's like fifty fifty true because it's like Goku does have limits in the sense that he can't do certain things. But it's true in the way that you put it, where Goku does exceed his limits. He does find a way to win. He finds ways to become stronger and more powerful. And he will always, you know, pass his limit. He will always find a way to pass his limit. And I feel like that's a, an important part of Goku's character and the way he continues to develop from, you know, the way he was concepted to now in Super, where he's a character who can literally punch uh, the universe will explode, you know, just, he'll just punch something and the universe will explode, you know, that's the amount of power Goku has been able to obtain from his conception to now, and I think that's an important quality that people need to consider, now granted, that wasn't canon until this fight was created, granted, but even at that, you know, it still makes a lot of sense in the way that you're pronouncing, and I completely agree with everything you stated, but moving off of that, let's get into some more comments before I end this video, um, let's see here, here's a classic, uh, Bardock is the original Super Saiyan God, okay, lol, no he is not, the original Super Saiyan God, Bardock, is Super Saiyan, that's it buddy, Shenron clearly said that the original Super Saiyan God was a good Saiyan, along with the other six he united forces with, Bardock and his teammates were not good Saiyans, they were just as bad as an average Saiyan, well, you're completely true, uh, once again, 
Uh, I never stated that Bardock was original anything. I mean, like, it's not canon. Once again, people, it's not canon. Bardock is not, you know, original Super Saiyan, nor is he original Super Saiyan God. Uh, but anyways, moving off of that, on my reaction, my infamous reaction to the Dragon Ball Z uh, Team 4 Star video. Nice video, plus your voice is amazing. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> anyways, moving off of that, so let's see. Let's find some more comments I can end this video with. Um, let's see, let us see, let us see, okay. All right, let's end it with a very interesting debate. On my Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F movie Blu-ray review, do you recommend Kai or Z? I still debate what to pick up, since I wanted one of them on Blu-ray. I liked Frieza's new voice a lot, the same one that was in the movie. I feel it was a lot better than the original, but I'm not really sure if Kai is better overall. Well, I actually commented back, and I feel like that's a pretty good comment to end on, and really uh, it opens up for discussion, which is, which version of Dragon Ball Z is better? Is it the original Funimation dub? Or is it the Kai dub? Now, for those of you who don't know, essentially, uh, back, I want to say a couple years ago, of course, toy animation as another uh, key term to make more money off of the brand that is Dragon Ball Z, they created a remastered version of the anime, which is called Dragon Ball Kai over in Japan. And, of course, it's called Dragon Ball Z Kai over here in the States. And, essentially, it's just a remastered version of, of Dragon Ball Z with some, you know, color corrections, some, you know, you know different... It, it's a much more... Uh, it, it's supposed to match the manga to a certain extent, so that's pretty much all the, all it really is. It's, it's essentially a, a much more manga canon version of... Uh, for the anime because you know it just takes out all the filler it, uh, it helps out with the pacing problems and all that kind of stuff and um, This specific youtuber is asking which one should he per do I personally recommend for him to get and I pay I basically put it in the comment and this is the best way I can put it and I want to know a lot of people others feedback on it and uh, I'm gonna end it with this comment um, overall this is essentially what I stated it all depends on preference. I personally prefer Z for several reasons. I grew up with it. The original Funimation recording is great, and I love the Bruce Falconer soundtrack. However, Kai is also great for other reasons, like the original Japanese soundtrack and the pacing, uh, color palette, and dialogue match the original manga. So, in the end, it depends on what you prefer. Either one is great, but if you prefer the new voice talent, get Kai. And that's all I can really say. Like, if you're a fan of the new Frieza voice, then you're probably going to prefer Kai. But if you're a fan of, like, the original dub, then you, then you should, you know, obviously go and get the original Z recordings. But at the end of the day... It's a win-win scenario. I know a lot of people like to debate and say like, Oh, Kai is terrible. The original Toonami is, is the best. I only prefer Funimation. You know, that's cool and all, but it's a win-win scenario at the end of the day. I mean, Kai is great. The original Z is great. I personally prefer both. I actually like both. I mean, I find great qualities in both, and I see, you know, obviously significant downers, and, you know, there's obviously, there's always going to be, you know, your pros and cons with everything, you know, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to pick and choose, like, which version of the anime that you should get when it comes to Dragon Ball, like, get both, or just get either one, because it's always going to be good either way, I mean, like, Kai is awesome, I mean, like, it's freaking fun, especially if you get the uncut version, because, you know, you, you need that fucking shit in your life, <laughs> but, um, at the end of the day, uh, although the Majin Buu arc is going to really kill you inside because, you know, it's not out. But at the end of the day, it's it's a win-win scenario, folks. It's We don't have to debate which one's better because they're all great. They're all freaking good. And plus, you know, you can watch both at any time you want because it's all available. So just let me know what you personally think. And I'm going to end this episode with that um, because I have some other things to do. And plus, this ep I don't want to, you know, make this episode too long. Uh, but overall, let me know what you personally think about everything I had to state in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed this newest episode of the podcast. I am officially back with that Super Kyle Ken. And unfortunately, I don't know when the next episode's going to come out. But um, just keep in mind that for my podcast shows, that episodes will be coming out sporadically, you know, as months go on. So 
I don't know how many episodes I'll be able to put out, but I'm going to try and make sure I do my best to make sure, uh, to, to have at least a good episode a month or an episode every couple months. So that's pretty much all I can really say, but let me know what you personally think about the topics I had to say. Do you want to see a One Punch Man Dragon Ball Z crossover? What are your personal thoughts on the Resurrection F saga? And what are your personal opinions and speculations and anticipation for the universe 6 saga and of course what are your personal thoughts on the comments i had to state in this video with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed as always follow me on twitter and instagram at john 12 and of course you can subscribe to my channel to get all of my podcasts and videos that i make weekly and of course with that being said and done i hope everyone has enjoyed and this has been the super kyle ken podcast